So we brought to uh, the Paris Air Show 1D001, what we call 1D001, which is our very first MAX 9, 737 MAX 9, our largest member of the family so far. Uh, this is really going to be our workhorse of our MAX 9 fleet. We're going to have two airplanes in flight test. However, the second, which, the second airplane will come on board uh, uh, later in the summer. But the majority of the work is going to be done on our first airplane here. Um, we've completed our initial flutter and much of our initial airworthiness work. When we finish up here at Paris, we'll take it back to Seattle and finish that work up. At that point, we'll be able to uh, get what's called our Type Inspection Authorization, or TIA, which is going to allow us to start into our CERT work uh, for the MAX 9. Uh, we will be testing throughout the remainder of the year through 2017, uh, mainly around uh, performance, stability and control, uh, auto lands, those things that are really associated with the longer body length of the MAX 9. Uh, we expect finishing up flight testing uh, in 2017 and we'll uh, certify in one queue and deliver shortly after our certification. So that's really our plan for the MAX 9 this year. So these are our first weight uh, center of gravity water barrels. So we can use those to trap water in the front or the back or move water between the front and the back. And instead of allowing us to stay on condition for flight tests for an hour or two hours, we can get a long four or five hour day. The airplane is configured to be very common with the, with the NG, and so a pilot can walk into here and he'll be able to find everything he can, in the, just like he can in the NG, and it's down to roughly, a, the FAA approved us uh, for two and a half hours of computer-based training for the transition between the two aircraft. All the overhead panel switches are the same. Uh, the only minor difference is because of the change in the displays is to move some of the center 